Welcome VR lovers and Oculus Quest fans. My name is Tony and today I'll show you how to install RetroArch onto your Quest so you can play all your favorite retro games in your Quest fully mobile without needing to stream from the PC or even be connected to the internet. In the first part I'll show you how to connect your controller and in the next part I'll show you how to install and play RetroArch. So the controller I'm using here to connect to my Quest is a wireless controller for Xbox One, model number 1708. It's a Bluetooth controller, and bear in mind not all controllers work, such as this controller which requires a wireless receiver with the model I'm using, model number 1708. But you can also Google it to find out what controllers will work for other people, and the Oculus support page also has more information on that. So to connect our controller, we go into our app, we turn on our Oculus Quest headset, connect it to the app, then we go into controllers. There we click pair new controller. Then we select pair gamepad and it will search for a gamepad. Now here I'm selecting the Bluetooth button on top of the gamepad and you'll see the light is flashing which shows me the gamepad is also searching for Bluetooth connections. Now it took me a couple of times before my app picked it up but it did eventually then just select the controller that appears on your phone if you pop your headset on you should see a dialog box like this appear and of course we just select pair in order to complete the pairing process next we need to download RetroArch so Google RetroArch select download we want to download the Android version so scroll down to that and select download you should see the .apk file now we're going to install the APK file via SideQuest. Now there are other ways you can do this, but I like using SideQuest. I've included links in the description below to get you set up with SideQuest if you're not already. So first make sure your headset is connected to SideQuest. Then we want to install the APK file. So click on this icon up in the top there, find your file and simply click open. Uh, I'm not going to do this because I've already installed it, but once you do that, it'll install it and it's as simple as that. Next, pop your headset on, go into Oculus TV, go into Channels, and we want to check that we have RetroArch installed in our channels, and we do here. Now, I can't record past this point because Oculus do not let you record Oculus TV. I just can't do it, Captain. I do it, have the power. So next, I'll show you how to install your ROMs on the Quest. Connect your Quest to your computer, go into your internal storage, you should find RetroArc folder there already. Now I like to place my ROMs in the download section. I've already got a folder here, but I'm gonna create a new one called N64 for my N64 ROMs. Now in terms of where you get your ROMs, I'm gonna leave that down to you. Uh, if you check on the internet, there are plenty of ROM sites. Now just be careful where you download your ROMs because some can contain um, harmful software, harmful viruses and malware and things like that. Um, so just make sure you do your homework before you download anything. And I'll also leave all the legalities of this down to you as well. Couldn't resist, mate. <laughs> so as I said before, I couldn't unfortunately record RetroArch from within the headset. So I had to record it via the PC. So there are gonna be some differences in the menu systems, but they're essentially quite similar. And so I'll take you through some basic setup First we update our cores, so cores are basically emulators. Now it's going to be a bit different in your headset. In your headset on the main menu screen you'll see something called online updater. Select this and this will take you to a similar menu to the menu that you're seeing here. So you update your core info files, then you update your databases. Next on the main menu you'll also see load content and load core. So we want to load cores. This is basically installing an emulator onto the Quest. We select download core, we find our emulator. I've included a link in the description below that shows you some of the best emulators for RetroArch that you can install for the different systems. Um, I'm going to install this N64 emulator here, Muppin64 Plus. Then I go down to load content. I go to downloads, which is where my ROMs are. I go to N64, I go to Hexen, and then I put load archive. You then select the emulator. I don't think I had to do that in the headset, but I played Hexen in the headset via this emulator and it worked fine. I played for about five minutes. There was no slowdown, jitteriness. I could save and load my game just fine. There was no problems. 
So now I'll show you just a couple more setup things. Uh, I'm not gonna go into a deep dive, there's so many settings here, but just a few things I noticed. Uh, if you go to the settings, uh, you have your input here where you can obviously assign different keys and things like that for your gamepad, which is going to be important. We also have this on-screen display setting, on-screen overlay, I turn that off so you don't see this overlay of buttons on the, on the screen covering your view. We also go into configuration files and then save current configuration to save our settings. Um, and these are some of the main things. You can check out other videos which will go into more detail about the RetroArch settings if you want to get really into it. But that will get you up and running. Another thing I noticed in order to load another game, I'd have to quit out of the channel and come back in again. A bit annoying. There might be an easier way to do this. Let me know if you find an easier way in the comments below. But that's it from me. I really hope you find this video useful and I'll catch you in the next one.